You're listening to What Do Scientists Do? Usually this is a show where I interview a different guest each episode and they teach us about their favorite science topic. But today we have a very special episode for you. My name is Jessica and today I'm joined by Madame Mangione's grade 4 or 5 class from Burton Ettinger Elementary School in Halifax, Nova Scotia. And they'll get to interview me. Cool, so hello. I'm joined by Madame Mangione's grade 4 or 5 class today for a very special flipped interview episode of What Do Scientists Do? where they will be interviewing me. And so we're joined by our first interviewer today. Um, what's your name? Uh, my name's Isla. Isla, and how old are you, Isla? I'm 10. 10? Cool. Um, so what question do you have for me today? What is your favorite science experiment? My favorite science experiment is probably, some of you might know it, um, it's called Elephant's Toothpaste. We do it, you see a lot of YouTube videos of it, and we do it at like supernova camps a lot. And it's still very cool to watch every single time, and it really makes me feel like a real scientist. Anything chemistry does, but elephant's toothpaste is very fun. If you don't know what it is, it's when you do a chemical reaction in a beaker with like a narrow top, and you pour food coloring down it, and it puts bubbles into dish soap that bubble up and look like you squeezed out a giant tube of toothpaste. So that's why it's called Elephant's Toothpaste. So that's my favorite science experiment. My name is Ashlyn. I am 10 years old. My question is, is what inspired you to start science? To start science? I, when I was probably around your age, I actually had um, someone come into my classroom. I lived in Ontario, so it wasn't um, Supernova. It was someone else. But they do similar things to Supernova, where they do workshops and stuff. And so I remember we got to extract DNA from bananas, which is something that we do at Supernova as well. Um, and I thought it was so cool. And that was, when, that was one of the times I knew I wanted to do science. I always really liked science class as a kid. Um, I got to do some similar things in high school as well where I knew I wanted to be a scientist through a different organization. So it was things like science workshops and stuff, and just really liking science class. Um, I knew that I liked biology specifically, so I knew that I liked living things, and maybe I wanted to be a doctor or work in a lab or something like that. So that was um, how I knew that I liked science. My name's Claire. I'm 11. What type of scientists are you? What type of scientist am I? So I did my university degree in microbiology, which means studying um, things that you can't see without a microscope. So that's things like bacteria, that's things like viruses. So a lot of the people doing COVID research and stuff work in the same science stuff that I've worked in. Um, that's things like tiny little one cell creatures that you can see in the ocean. So things that you can only see with a microscope. So I've done, I did a little bit of research on um, a vaccine once in the lab. That's something I did a little, a little bit of. So that's the kind of science that I do. Um, my name is Marley. Cool. And how old are you, Marley? I'm 11 years old. Um, my question is, is there anyone you're really hoping to interview in the future? Anyone I'm really hoping to interview? I mean, my dream, there are some dream people to interview who are already really famous people that it's unlikely that I'll get to interview, but maybe. Um, people like Neil deGrasse Tyson, does anybody know who that is? Um, who's a big space person? Um, Hank Green, if anybody knows who Hank Green is, that might be more um, my generation. But yeah, those are some dream people. I mean, there are a few people at Dalhousie that I really hope I can interview that are actually some pretty famous marine biologists and things like that, because Dalhousie has a lot of that. So like, there's a person named Hal Whitehead who studies whales and is a really famous whale guy. So that would be somebody. I'm actually, there are some people who I can't talk about yet who I'm going to be interviewing who I'm very excited to interview because they do some pretty cool stuff, but I can't say who they are yet. Some people I actually used to work with I would really like to interview. I interviewed somebody who worked um, with rovers and space and satellites. The episode isn't out yet, but that was a very cool interview. That's cool. Yeah. 
Do, is there anybody that you would want me to interview? Does anybody have any ideas? Yeah. Mark you can, you can, Rover. Is Mark Rover? Rover? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the engineering YouTube yeah. person. Yeah, thank you. Um, my name is Mia. I'm 11. Um, what does a typical day look like for you? What does a typical day look like for me? So, as a scientist or in my job at Supernova or both? Um, both. Both, okay. So in my job at Supernova, which is mostly what I do right now, I'm a communications person, which means I do some boring things like answer emails and call parents and some of the stuff that the people down at the front office might do. But I also do things like our social media. I get to make this podcast and interview people. I spend a lot of time editing it and like doing all the social media for it and tweeting about it. Um, I sometimes, when we have extra time, make videos for us and edit those videos about science and for YouTube and things like that. During camp, I help run around and run all the camp stuff. I'm kind of like a front office person. I do a little bit of everything really at my job. I get to do lots of creative things, which is very fun. And I get to like make fun stuff about science. I run our TikTok is one thing I get paid to do, which is very exciting. Um, so yeah. When I work as a scientist, or when I have worked as a scientist, there are some days where you go in and it's like in the movies where you just have, like, it's called a pipette, those things that they hold and press with their thumb and like put liquid into tubes. That is sometimes what it looks like when you're a scientist and you have a lab coat on and you go and you run experiments, but there's also a lot of waiting involved. So while you wait, you do a lot of reading, you try to learn more about your subject, you try to figure out why your experiments aren't working, you talk to other people and see if they can help you um, solve any problems that you have, you write about what you figured out or what you're learning. So those are all the different things that you can do. Sometimes you might go help teach people or like teach students who are younger than you. Um, so yeah, that's the kind of stuff that I did when I worked as a scientist. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Josie. I'm 10 years old. My question is, who is your most um, interesting guest and why? Most interesting guest? So it probably depends on what you're interested in. My personal favorite guest that I've had, um, their episode is not out yet, but I can talk about it. There's nothing secret. Um, her name is Kelsey Dortson, and I mentioned her before. She used to work for Supernova, actually, but right now she works as an engineer um, in like the space industry, and she has helped NASA make rovers. She's worked with satellites. She actually had to reschedule our recording twice because something was wrong with her network of satellites that she had to deal with. So she does a lot of very cool stuff um, with like artificial intelligence and robots and being an engineer, so she's probably one of my favorites. She was very cool. Yeah, I also interviewed um, a shark scientist who happens to be my roommate. She was one of the first ones. Um, so, but that was actually very fun because, I mean, I'm friends with her because I live with her, but also sharks are cool. So what's your name? Miranda. Miranda, and how old are you? 11. Was science your favorite subject in school and what other, um, favorite subjects of yours that you had and that's just my first question okay well we can do that one first yeah. um science was one of my favorite subjects in school i always liked science and math in high school i really liked chemistry and biology specifically so those are two specific types of science um but i always liked school in general and i also really liked um english class i actually went to an arts high school for creative writing that's a fun fact. So I've always really liked artsy things and science things, um, which is why I like my current job, because I get to do both of those things. But I really liked science, but I liked um, like English and stuff a lot. Yeah. And my second question is, um, we're, um, one of my favorite types of science is like ecology. Okay. Um, have you ever like interviewed somebody to like work with like saving the earth or like was or did you ever like that type of science yeah so i don't do a lot of that type of science because i work on like really small scales but i know a lot of people who do the closest i've 
I actually did interview one person um, who was a, she researches coral reefs. Um, her name is Suchinta Arif. Um, she, you can find her episode, it's posted. So she was a coral reef ecologist. Um, so she does stuff that involves saving the earth and she studies like the big scale coral reefs and um, how like warm water affects them and all of that. So I did interview her. Um, the shark interview is also a little bit ecology related, um, but I will probably definitely interview lots of them in the future because uh, Dalhousie has a lot of environmental science people and ecology people and people who do that kind of stuff. Is that something you're interested in? Yes. Have you ever interviewed um, a person who works up in the Arctic? A person who works up in the Arctic? Not yet, but I would love to. So, what's your name? Ben. And how old are you, Ben? Nine. Um, why do you think it is important for kids to love science? Why do I think it's important for kids to love science? I don't think I don't think every kid everywhere needs to love science. Like it doesn't have to be your favorite subject. Everybody's gonna have different interests and different favorite subjects, and it does. You don't. Not everybody has to become a scientist or do a science degree in university. So I don't think everybody needs to like pursue science or even love science class. But I think it's important for every kid to realize that um, they are scientists, even if they don't already realize it. Like we are, like kids are naturally scientific. You guys are curious and you like to explore things, and you explore a lot more and ask a lot more questions than most adults. So you're already a lot more scientific than lots of adults. But I also want kids to realize that even if maybe science class is hard or maybe like math class is hard for you or something like that science can still be fun and it can still be something that you have fun with and enjoy and that you can do even if it might not be your favorite thing in school so that's what i think is important for kids to know about science um science is also just about how the world works and so knowing some science can really help you when it comes to even reading the news so like, so many people have learned so much about microbiology and viruses and stuff because of coronavirus, but that took a lot of teaching people when everything happened. So not you don't have to love science, but knowing science can be really helpful in the real world even if you're not a scientist. My name is Johanna. I'm 11. My question is, do you hope by doing these podcasts kids will get inspired to do science? I hope that some kids might get inspired to do science. I hope kids will get inspired to um, maybe do science for the right reasons. I want them to do science because they hear what real scientists do and they go, oh, that sounds like something I would want to do or that sounds like something I'm really curious about mm -hmm. instead of just doing science because it's the thing that their parents want them to do or it's a thing they can do because they don't know what else to do. So I'm hoping that it will, kids who already want to do science, it will reassure them that that is what they want to do. And maybe some kids will decide that they want to do it because it sounds like something cool. So I want to show all the different ways you can do science too because it's more than just being in a lab and it's more than just university and stuff as well. My name is Liam. Liam, nice to meet you. And how old are you? I'm 10. And the question is, did you grow up doing a lot of science at home? Did I grow up doing a lot of science at home? I did because my dad did um, a chemistry degree. He's not a chemist, but he, my dad really liked science, and he definitely hoped that I would like science. And it turns out I did. I think I had, I remember having like a, micros a little toy microscope and stuff at home. I was really interested in science at home. But I was interested in more than just science, too. So I did a lot of different things, but yeah. I remember I really wanted to do experiments, probably when I was younger than you, where I would just mix random things together. And my mom had to make sure I wasn't mixing really bad things together, because that can be dangerous. So I would make like experiments on my deck um, when I was a little kid, um, which is not something that you should do without your parents watching, because if you find cleaning products or something, that can be really dangerous. But 
uh, I definitely did a lot of science as a kid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, can I ask you another question? What's the most fascinating um, question that you ever heard? Most fascinating question that I heard? Like from, like from this class or from somebody else? Um, whatever. That's a really good question. When I was interviewing um, Austin for one of the paleontology episodes, so one of the fossil episodes, this is somebody I used to work with, so I know him pretty well. And I think he, I was interviewing him, and I'm not very used to being asked questions. And I think he said, what's your favorite fossil? And I panicked because I don't know what my favorite fossil is. I wasn't expecting that question. Um, and I don't even remember what I answered. But that, that was a question that was really interesting that I'd never thought about before. My name is Matthew. Matthew, cool. how old are you? I'm 11. My question is, would you have any hints for like, or tips for our podcast, Culture Kids? Do I have any tips for the podcast, Culture Kids? I listened to some of it, by the way. Um, I really enjoyed it. I like how you, you can tell that you know each other, which makes it fun to listen to your conversations. Um, hints and tips is the more that you practice it and the more that you practice interviewing people, the more natural it will get. So, like, it's, hard when you don't know each other too, um, to like come up with questions on the spot and everything like we're doing right now. But I'd say that um, getting used to asking each other questions but making it a conversation and making it natural um, will probably make it um, even better to listen to. It's already very good though. I really enjoyed it. But yeah, um, trying to forget just a little bit that you're like recording is always helpful. My name is Leela. I'm 11. My question is, what made you start a podcast? What made me start a podcast? So I've always really loved listening to podcasts, both science podcasts and not science podcasts. And I saw that somewhere on our like work to do lists from a long time ago, somebody had put like podcast question mark. And we have really busy times of the year and really not busy times of the year. And this was during a very not busy time of the year. So I was kind of looking for ideas and projects. And so I was like, hey, somebody wanted to do a podcast once. Maybe I should do it. And maybe we should do it for kids because that's something that's similar to the other things that we do, like workshops and camps. Even if somebody doesn't live in Halifax or in Atlantic Canada, they can still learn some cool science stuff. So um, I got the idea from a to-do list, but I, it kind of grew from there, um, and I like listening to things where people get interviewed, and I wanted a version of that for kids, so that's where I got the idea, yeah. I have one more question. Yeah? Do you think interviewing other scientists makes you a better scientist? Absolutely. I think interviewing other people, other scientists, gives you perspectives that you wouldn't get otherwise. So. Science is very cool, but scientists um, study really specific things because they become experts in this one really specific thing. So like, I can tell you a whole lot about rabies, but I don't know very much about being an engineer. So interviewing other scientists, you can learn about like types of problem solving that you wouldn't usually do, like how engineers do things and how scientists do things can be very different. Um, you can learn about ways that different areas of science could connect in ways that you didn't think about otherwise. So like biology and space, how can they connect? Um, so you can, it definitely makes you a better scientist and it makes connections that you might be able to use later too. So um, if you wanted to collaborate on something. Uh, interdisciplinary is the word that you use if you have more than one area of science that you're um, studying at once. So maybe a chemist and a biologist and um, an engineer all work together. That would be like an interdisciplinary project. And I think it, those make for better science and interviewing people can help um, lead to things like that too. So yeah, definitely. When you're done watching this, Go watch Culture Kids podcast. Yes, um, that's your classroom's podcast. What's yeah. Culture Kids about? 
It's about like talking about different cultures and like what they're about and like different traditions and stuff yeah. like that. Super cool. Yes, absolutely. You can find Culture Kids on Spotify, right? Yeah. Awesome. And that's Culture Kids spelled with two Ks and a Z at the end? Yes. Cool. Culture Kids with two Ks and a Z. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Okay, bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to What Do Scientists Do? And thank you so much to Madame Mangione's grade 4 or 5 class for being willing to interview me. As always, you can find more information and science fun about what do scientists do at ScientistsDoPod on Twitter and Instagram. And you can also find all of our past episodes, transcripts, everything like that at bit.ly forward slash what do scientists do. I'm also going to remind you once again to check out Culture Kids. It's the podcast made by Madame Mangione's class and they did an excellent job. They interview each other about their culture. I listened to it and I highly recommend it. I'll make sure to put a link in the description for that. If you have any questions that you would like answered by an expert or requests for guests, make sure to send us an email or an audio recording at what do scientists do at superstaff.ca. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you next episode. And I'm going to go try to tweet at Mark Rover now. See you next time. This show was made by Supernova at Dalhousie University, a network member of Actua. For more information on our summer camps, workshops, and more, visit supernova.dal.ca.